Inside the Nawaiski Gymnasium at the Wilmore Center on the Ripon College campus for tonight's Ripon College versus Grinnell College Midwest Conference matchup here on the Ripon Channel and Midwest Conference Television. Our production team tonight, Jonathan and Patrick. I'm joined by Creed Slattery. I'm Jason Mansworth. Welcome to the matchup today as the Ripon College Redhawks 0-3 in the conference, 2-10 overall. Take on a Grinnell College Pioneer team that is 4-0 in the Midwest Conference and 9-2 overall. Greet, I know he had a chance to talk to head coach Skinny Kunkel for a little bit before this game. What are some of the thoughts that he had? Well, Jason, he had just wanted to talk about how proud he was of his guys. They've been practicing hard all throughout break. They're hoping they can catch up some ground in the conference over some teams in the back end of the season. They haven't had the best start to the year, as you mentioned. But they're just looking to finish strong and go in to the end of the season looking like the best they can be. Uh, it's been a while since the Red Hawks have played all the way back on December 18th at UW Oshkosh. They lost 84 to 60. And then uh, two days before that versus Lakeland, they picked up a victory 87 to 79. On the other side of it for the Grinnell College Pioneers, uh, they are taking on a, a Ripon College team, but they picked up a victory last week at Blackburn, 125 to 91. So they've had a little bit of some time uh, to get a game in here after the holiday break. Uh, but it'll be great to have the Grinnell College Pioneers in town tonight. Always a fun game at the Ripon College Gymnasium when we're looking forward. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. We will go first with the Grinnell College Pioneers. They will start number two, Tolu Johnson, a six foot five inch junior from Chicago, Illinois. Number four, Jordan Lee, a six foot one inch freshman from San Pedro, California. Number five, Nicholas Courtney, a six foot four inch sophomore from Corona Del Mar, California. Number 11, Kai Tihuki, the five foot, I should say the six foot six freshman from Opuni, New Zealand, and number 15, Zach Rosen, a five foot 11 inch sophomore from Deerfield, Illinois. Under the head coaching direction of David Arsenal and is a season, those are the Grinnell College Pioneers. A look at your starting lineup for the Ripon College Red Hawks this evening. Number three, William Ryan, a five foot 10 inch senior from Northfield, Illinois. Number four, Clark Cunningham, a six foot one inch senior from Cary, Illinois. Number 23, Cade Tackmeyer, a six foot four inch senior from Peshtigo, Wisconsin. Number 34, Luke Meinholz, a six foot four inch junior from Oconomowoc. And number 50, Colby Williams, a six foot seven inch sophomore from New Orleans. Under the head coaching direction of Kenny Finko in his first season, those are the Ripon College Red Hawks. Grinnell College Pioneers in the black travel jerseys with the red stripes and the red numbers with the outline of the white. Red Hawks and the white home jerseys with the four with the uh, red letters, as I say, the red numbers and the black trim as well. Crete, glad to have you along. I'm glad to be here. And the main reason, the main difference in between these two lineups, as you were mentioning, going through their starters, um, you have Grinnell. They only have one senior on the entire roster. So we are looking at a team that is going to have basically the same look for the next two, three years potentially. And you look at Ripon, a lot of their starters are seniors or juniors. We are looking at a team that is very experienced, but it has a bright future with the seniors and with the freshmen and sophomores that they have behind them. Kobe Williams will jump for the Red Hawks and Tolu Johnson for the Pioneers. Folks, it's gonna be quick. Oh, Kobe yes. got a little bit of a jump ahead of time there. Music's been stopped, and here we go. Underway. Tip is controlled by the Red Hawks. Quickly down the court, left side. Back over to Mine Holtz out of bounds. Couldn't get it. Turnover for the Red Hawks. That's the main thing that Grinnell's going to try to do. They're going to try to speed you up on defense, try to get you to make mistakes, and then we all know what they're going to do on offense. Well, you made the note on their shooting search. Three is better than two. Yep. First one taken by Grinnell, no good, tied up, held ball, possession will stay with the Pioneers. For those of you who might not know, Grinnell runs a offense, they just call it the system. It's what it's known as all throughout basketball. There's six main tenants that we'll get to eventually, but you watch it, it's like watching a hockey game on hardwood. They will rotate five in rather quickly and they're not afraid to take the three, but they'll get a line baseline every once in a while. 
Back out, here comes the run through. Kick back out. That's gonna oh be a foul. My. Griffin's gonna get called for their first. That'll be on William Ryan, first personal, first team. No score here, 30 seconds gone. As they go to the line here, the first tenant of their offense, and it's the main one, the first possible shot is the best possible shot. They want to get the first shot. I know they took their time there, but they are looking to shoot everything. Johnson missing the first free throw. And the other thing that they're known for is number two, shoot as many threes as possible. Set it on their shooting shirts, three is better than two. You can't argue with the logic there. If you make more three-pointers than their two-pointers, you're gonna win the game. 33 seconds into it, the first four comes in. Johnson on the second free throw attempt, no good. Just a 30% free throw shooter on the season. And Grinnell will get the rebound and go back on the offense. Hard fought up shot, put up there and good. That's 10, Gabe Garcia, the freshman from Alameda, California. Red Hawks will break the press, load it back out, Meinholz. Inside to Kobe Williams, and there's the first flush of the game for the Red Hawks. That's something you might see a lot of tonight. Grinnell doesn't really care if you get points. They want to play offense. Shot put up, no good. Williams on the rebound. Rippon will come away with a tie to two. Already seen more two-pointers today than I thought I would right, all night. Exactly. <laughs> Wide open on the left now. They'll cross it back over. Cade Tackmeyer with it. He'll get pressure defense. Back him out to the timeline. Meinholz at the stripe. Left side kick. Three-pointer on the way. No good. Rebounded out. Red Hawks. Meinholz will go up for it. That ball is going to get... Okay, there will be a follow on that. I thought they were just going to call out on bounce, but they'll call the foul on Grinnell. And you're seeing the other part of their offense, their attendance, which is double team the ball at all times. They want to put pressure on you at all times, make you mess up. Looking for the trap, and Meinholz will go to the free throw line for his first attempt of the evening. Tied at two here, about a minute and a half gone. No good on the free throw there. We have yet to see a free throw made. Nope. 0 for 3. Not something you usually see at the college level. New 5 coming in for Grinnell. And Rippon has given up altogether just grabbing a rebound off the free throw. Mine holds second free throw attempt. That one's through the twine. Good. 3-2 lead for Rippon. 18-25. Quickly across the 47-foot line. Go to the left edge. Come through the middle. Kick back out. Right wing 3. Good. No hustle back on defense. Kai T. Hookie on the three-point basket. Good for... T. Hookie, their leading scorer, of course. Yes. Meinholz on the trap. Since they tack Meyer on the trap to Meinholz to Colby Williams for the basket. And good. Colby Williams out of New Orleans has been a great pickup. The transfer out of Iowa, Les Iowa Le Wesleyan. Ugh. <laughs> Big presence he brings in there with that six-foot-seven-inch frame. Just a sophomore. Bright future ahead for the Red Hawks as long as Kobe Williams is playing. Inbounds for the Pioneers, tied at five here. Tied to Huki. Spin move, good move. Paced off the board, no good. Mine holds on the run out. Quickly ahead, William Ryan tripped over his laces. Tackmeyer will feel the pressure. Unloads it to Ryan. Pressure picked up all there by the Pioneers. Kick back out on the reload. Spin move through the lane. Left-handed finish. Won't go. Wanted Looking a for foul, foul there. Yeah, didn't get it. Meinholz quickly had to attack Meyer. Now Meinholz will get fouled again. This is the one thing that that double team, the ball at all times, can get Grinnell into trouble with. Foul trouble. So new five coming in for Grinnell. A couple of new faces for the Red Hawks as well. Cameron Ford in there. Dominic Gilotti in there. Dom Gilotti out of Chicago area. Connor Spivoko in there too. Dom got picked a little bit that side. Basket up and good that time for Ryan Tarigi on that. 
Dom thought about the three instead, kicks it down inside. Back out, reload, shot, left-handed, three, good. Red Hawks, Connor Spiel will go for a three-pointer. Rippin leads by one, 16-39 remaining. Another three on the other side is gonna be good. Jordan Lee for the Pioneers. Quickly across the timeline, wide open. There's Cameron Ford, almost too wide open, right? Yeah. A little flustered on that shot, fade away, mid-range, good. William Ryan on the 15-foot J. You're seeing it right now. The offense will come alive for any team that plays Grinnell because they let it. Three flies and that's good. But then they'll come right back right. and do that. Jordan Lee with another one to make the score 13-10. We'll let it play out here for a little bit and just let you watch. Mine holds, they'll give that up every day. Let him take that shot. If this is your introduction to watching basketball, Believe me, it's not a good one. <laughs> no, it is not. Tarigi, we tried to get through there and uh, was fouled along the way. Tackmeyer. This is a system that at the NBA you really only see saw with the late 2010s Houston Rockets led by Mike D'Antoni and James Harden. But this has taken that to a whole new level. This is living and dying by the three and also digging your own grave by it. Nice finish on the top edge there, won't go down. Good move though from Gabe Garcia. Pressure in the backcourt. Almost taken away there. Numbers this time, five on four on two. Shot for three, good, Spiel Vogel. Again, he's two for two from beyond the arc today. Grinnell will try to answer and take the lead, that won't go. Garcia will go through again, nice finish. Tied at 15 here with five minutes gone. Spielvoca wide open on the right wing. Ford picked off, but Rippin almost got it back. Three on the way, that's good. Another example, they will give up the wide open two to take the three any day of the week and Max, twice on Sunday. Yeah, Max DeGeorge on the three-point basket that time. Good for the Pioneers, 18-15, three-point lead for Grinnell. Ford at the free throw line, good. Just keep chipping away, right? Garcia loses a dribble on the way out. He slipped. New five in for the Pioneers. And for the Red Hawks, number 55, Jaden Fitch, six foot five inch junior from Fall Creek. Transfer from UW Superior as well. Spielvogel ahead. Clark Cunningham. Tackmeyer will take it. Come through the middle, basket up, no good. Cunningham. Gonna get a blocking foul there. Yeah, get into the line on that. Courtney's gonna be called for the foul for the Pioneers. 14.06 remaining, first half. 18-17, Cunningham at the stripe. That one's gonna miss. 74% free throw shooter on the year is Clark. That one's good. Something you're gonna need to beat the Pioneers. You're gonna need to make your free throws yeah. because like I said, they will send you to the line. It's just a matter of how quickly they get the ball back and are able to shoot. Another foul there on Luke Meinholz. Kinda got ran into, but it wasn't set, so it goes against him. This is where the hockey part comes into it. They will run you to death and then they'll sub in. So right. it's basically line changes. You gotta get comfortable playing with a certain group of guys when it comes to this. Good defense being shown by the Red Hawks. Mine Stripped holds. right out of them. Picked him out of there. Mine holds back over to the end. No good, rebounded from Fitch. That'll go out of, into the hands of the Pioneers. Tied at 18 here. 13 and a half remaining. 
Muscle it up. Travel. Okay. Kai Tahuki on the travel for the Pioneers. Stoppage of play. That means a new five. The only time you will ever not see someone see a new five in for Grinnell is when someone has a really hot hand going. Right. Or they're shooting free throws like we saw yeah. down here on the one. Back over to Kobe Williams. He'll go up right-handed, finishing good. Nice little no-look pass there from Tackmeyer to find the open Williams. Two-point lead by the Red Hawks currently. Pretty much back and forth so far this first half. Three on the way, put up, man, no good. Went for a flop there. Tackmeyer will bring it up. He's got paint in front of him. We'll throw back. Mine holds right back to Kobe Ooh. Williams. Wasn't quite ready for it. Kobe finished. Oh, and, and gets the, the one. one. Williams bobbled that pass. I think he was expecting Meinholz to take it, and so was everyone else in the gym. Meinholz had a wide open shot, but he got it to Williams, and now he's the opportunity for the three point play. And a new five in. Williams at the free throw line. Red Hawks, biggest lead of the ball game, four. And you look at the clock and you see that just over seven minutes has eclipsed. It feels like you've been watching this game for about 15 minutes. Right. 40 points already on the board between these two teams. I believe Grinnell's lowest point total on the year is 89. That just shows you what you're getting into when you watch a Pioneer basketball game. Garcia with it out on the right side edge. Boy, he handles well. Came through, got tripped up there. Looking like it could have been a carry, but Meinholz tripped him up on when he went by. So Meinholz with another foul. That's his second. Garcia is one of those guys, though. I think he handles the ball so well that anything's going to look like a carry, but yeah. it really isn't. It's just good. Just kind of gives you shades of Allen Iverson right, back in the day. Yes. 12.43 remaining first half. Red Hawks with a four-point lead. Their whole offensive philosophy on the inbound is just someone get open somehow. Well, a foul call against Rippon. It's going to be on Clark Cunningham, his second personal, so he'll probably they're gonna keep him in. The best ability is... Ba uh, forget I said anything. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the inbounds. Pioneers trail, trail by four. Trying to get something put up there. They're not going to go that time for... Travel as he came down with it. Couldn't find his footing and he fell. So it'll go against the Red Hawks, William, William Ryan. Inbounds coming from the Pioneers up top. They'll work it. Out to Dylan Gestering. Mitch Priest is going to call for the. Oh, they'll call it on. Yeah, Dylan Gestring. First personal, team's fifth for the Pioneers, trailing by four, 12 and a half. Still remaining in the first half. Spielbogel will find Dom Galani. Tackmeyer with it now. Setting up, there's the trap. Field logo. That one time didn't go one off the boot. Out of bounds, ripping basketball. Spielvogel's been riding the hot hand. He was two for two before that. Spielvogel, just me looking at him, give shades of Chris Mullen back in the day with the Warriors. Look at you coming through with the old school reference there. Well done, man. I'm an old soul. It's all right, man. At least that's what my friends do. You're uh, you're right on with that. He's got good looks on it. Good dish too, right? Yeah. The lefty, the lefty smooth stroke. Taken away out of the inbounds, and they're going to run the floor looking for the open three. They're going to take one that was contested. Rebound goes back to Will Ryan. Spielvogel will bring it up, find Zach Meyer. Galati on the spin over to the right side. Wide open, Spielvogel back to Galati. They'll just play catch around on the perimeter. Why not until Kobe finds a little bit of room? They got a lead, play with it. They're going to let you hold the ball down there. 
Picked out of there by the Pioneers. They'll run, go right side, kick. The hooky underneath, too far, traveled. Got messed up there with uh, Kobe Williams underneath the post. Tahuki only with three points so far, but on the season he's averaging just under 25 a game. He's been the uh, arsenal for this Grinnell squad. He's their weapon they go to when they need a bucket the most. I'm going to say it right now. I've never seen this in my Are life. Are they putting five in the baseline? Yeah. Basketball rules say that if a man comes out of bounds on the baseline, anyone can get it. They're going to run a football play. It's picked off. And it's going to go out of bounds. Yeah, good idea on the play, on the setup. I like it. Never seen it before. It looks like the old Bo Ryan transition drill we used to run in practice in high school. Spiel Vogel will look the inbounds. Going to go back and find William Ryan. Now they'll bring it to the full court. Tack Meyer. It's the one thing you can't do. You can't pick up the dribble out there against this team because that will happen. Didn't, didn't go as bad as it could have gone. Ripping on the keep. Galati with it. Spielvogel, lefty three. That's a little deep, no good. And now have a foul on. Loose ball foul on. So it's going to be on Sean Murphy of the Pioneers. 11 minutes remaining, 22-18 Red Hawk lead. We've been here for a while, though. Yeah. 22-18, seems like a fraternity. Feels like it should have been a whole half. Oh. Spielvogel wasn't ready for that one. Now back to the middle. Tackmeyer, 14-foot, Jay Good. Those are the shots you dream of getting in a game. Timeout to the Red Hawks by Finko. Finko will take a 30-second timeout. We'll take a 30-second timeout because we can. We'll come back with more right after this. Back here at the Wilmore Center, Ripon College leading Grinnell 24-18 on the scoreboard. Pioneers quickly run down the court. Ripon has done a nice job containing them so far. Defensively, the reload comes through the middle, good pick. That will roll out of the rim and Ripon will come away with the rebound. Galati, Tackmeyer, Cunningham, Williams, and Spielvogel. Kobe wide open. Tackmeyer this time goes off. Williams with it. Going to run back out fine. Clark Cunningham. Galati's got 10 on the shot clock. Now down to 6. He'll put it up. The mid-range jumper's been on fire for the Red Hawks, mainly because Grinnell let him shoot it any day of the week. Here's the 3 on the answer. That's good. Oh, boy. There's Grinnell basketball. 26-21, Red Hawks lead by five. I believe at the height of the Grinnell offense, they shot a shot every 7.4 seconds, I believe is really? what I heard during a game. Williams will fight for it to get the rebound, put it up and good for two. 28-21, 9-38. Right back to the middle there, good move on that end. Put back up and good for the Pioneers. Probably could have been two fouls called it a certain point on that play. Nick Lundy, the freshman from Manhattan Beach, California. With the two. Tackmeyer will go with it. He'll get the block. As Toku, uh, Tolu Johnson. Not happy with that one. No. The other thing you were mentioning with uh, one of their players from Manhattan Beach, 
it's just a team. You wouldn't expect to see the amount of diversity in terms of locations of these players on a team from a college in Iowa. Right. Especially a small private D3. But only one player on this team is from Iowa. Well, you get a chance to play in this system, right? Yeah. And you like to shoot. And you go. Right? This, this system takes players that were maybe role players who shot four threes a game in high school and turns them into leading scorers on a pretty good college basketball team. Free throw no good from Cade Tackmeyer's second attempt down the way. Got players from Connecticut, Texas, Illinois, California, uh, New Zealand, obviously, Ohio, Washington, Idaho. They even attract talent from some of the best high schools in the nation. You see Nick Courtney out of modern day in yep. California. Yes. Perennially a national powerhouse in football and in basketball. 29-23, Red Hawks lead by six. And that one goes out of bounds. No, oh, they'll say oh. we'll stay with the Red Hawks. I don't know about that one. Kenny Finko can't believe his eyes. Oh, they're calling a foul on it. Okay. That just didn't go out of bounds. Foul that went with it. Three on the way, deep, no good. Spiel Vogel with the pull. The Red Hawks will run the other way. Spiel Vogel will push to Galati. Dom crossing the timeline, going to the right side. Back out to the edge. Fitch with it. Ooh, he had Galati a wide open take. Meinholz. Meinholz there. Fitch back up. Nope. Meinholz will get fouled prior to. Dylan Gestring on the foul, his second, team's eighth. Under nine minutes to go here in the first half. Mine holds good on the basket. Kenny Finko was talking to me earlier, and he said that the one thing he emphasized in practice over the break leading up to Rippon was conditioning because you need to have good legs to play with Grinnell. They run the ball up and down the floor so fast that if you are unconditioned, you're going to be out of it by about the beginning of the second half. And not my ideal uh, comeback game after a holiday break right? <laughs> <laughs> to be into Grinnell right yeah. away. Here's the run through basket put up. They were looking for a travel maybe from that and now a technical on Coach Finko. I believe so. Yes. It's either going to be a tech on Finko or someone on the ripping bench. Oh, they call it an Connor Spiel logo? They're pointing to, I think, I think that's Clark Cunningham. So Clark Cunningham got his fourth foul not a technical then he's got four in the first half but they're shooting the technical foul here could have been something he said while on the bench okay other than that i don't know how you call a foul on a guy who's on the bench so second free throw no good we'll get that uh, figured out later Red Hawks lead 31-24, 8.45 remaining. There's just one coming in for Grinnell on that check-in. Number 42, Max DeGeorge coming in for Kai T. Hookie. Meinholz has got to get it in. He'll find William Ryan back over to Meinholz. Quick pass to Dom. Your ball movement has to be crisp when you play against Grinnell or else they will pick it off. Three from Galati, no good, rolls out, rebound pulled by the Pioneers. They'll run the other way, trailing by seven. Oh. Go up with it, ball goes out of bounds off of Luke Meinholz. Had no control of it in the air. He was looking for a foul, but he didn't have control of it in, while in the air. It was just incidental contact. Ribbon Knight now shooting 67% on their field goals. Just 41 for Grinnell. And that's what you need to do on this team. They're going to shoot it. You're not going to be able to stop them from shooting it. You just got to hope they are not hot. So Hookie will look back around. Basket put wow. up. No good. 
There's a lot of action in the paint there too. Griffin will come away with it. They'll try for a timeout. Did Grinnell. It's going to be a jump ball. And they will call held ball. Going to the Red Hawks. Getting a little chippy down low. Love to see it though. Tackmeyer going to get just robbed down there for a bit. Quickly ahead. You'll find Spielvogel. He'll passed wait. Open, passed open a wide three there. Meinholz, basket and one. And one from the free throw line. See that, that pass up by Spielvogel played out in the long run here. It's the second time it's happened. They've passed open a wide open three and it's led to an and one play. Meinholz will go to the free throw line. Zach Rosen with the foul for the Pioneers. Free throw, Meinholz good. Number 12, Ryan Davis, senior from Fredericksburg, Texas, being checked into the game for the Red Hawks. Quickly up the court are the Pioneers. Tahuki good. Tahuki with it, and now picked off again by the Pioneers. They'll reload again. Tahuki loses the dribble. Who going to call for the foul. The Red Hawks, I say, will get called for the foul. You see Dom Galati on the bench telling the rest of the bench to calm down. They've already gotten one technical for that so far. I don't want another. 7.32 remaining, 34-26. I believe it's the biggest lead of the ball game for the Red Hawks at eight. It's the longest 12 minutes or so of basketball I've ever watched in my life. It's been a, it's been a little bit of a drag on it. Yes, it has. That free throw is good as well. Tohuki checked out of the game for two, Tolu Johnson. But the Red Hawks, to their credit, have done a good job of limiting to Tohuki. Only eight points in the game so far for a guy that's been averaging 25 all game. Quickly over to the right side for the Red Hawks. Mine holds back to the corner, back to the middle. Tackmeyer will reload it out. Cade, wrap around, Colby. Gets it, take it, three-pointer, no good, won't go, rebound pulled, tack mark, won't go. There's a lid on the rim. That comes out, Tolu Johnson with the recovery. I'm not sure what that call is. I don't either, I've never seen it. <laughs> right? My apologies on that, 34-28. You see I, something new every day. Yeah, I do know it's a foul on Colby Williams. We were not the only ones uncertain as to what the call was. Judging by the movement, maybe something with restricting the lane of movement Could for the be. player. But I think that's the whole point of defense, is it not? Red Hawks off his foot. One, yeah. Kick back to the edge, here come the Pioneers. Good move around, they're back in this thing. 34-30. You don't want to let the Pioneers get hot. Because when they get hot, we all know the numbers they can put up. Davis throws it off of the Pioneer player, and that's good. That was Meinholz, I'm sorry. Ryan Davis will sit down. Spielvolka will come back in. New five for the Pioneers. As the uh, public address announcer, Lynn Krause, for the Ripon Codge Redhawks says, check your souvenir programs. Meinholz will do the inbounds. Find Spielvogel. He's got room and all kinds of it. Tackmeyer will catch it at the top of the key back over to Dom. Galati on the fake underneath. Good look. Basket up and good. Maybe the easiest two points Jaden Fitch will ever get in his college career. Six point lead again for Rippin. 620 remaining. Pioneers picks, down low, Tackmeyer with the pick. Try to get it to Meinholz, threw it away right into the hands of Grinnell. Jackson Leone on the steal. Good control. 
Got his own rebound, too. Went back up for it. This time, blocked. Rejected. Tackmeyer will fight through the defense. Now wait for everybody else. He was four on one there for a second. He <laughs> thought, mm, maybe battle. not. You battle. Right? Spielvogel from the corner again. I think it got tipped. I think so, too. Trajectory changed just a little bit. Dom, good look. Fitch will say, hey, I'll wait all day. Oh. oh. Couldn't go. No footer. A bunny. And it just rimmed out. Hate it when that happens. Happens to me too much at my local Y. <laughs> You tell me your post game ain't good? It's all right. Okay. <laughs> My so, friends will tell you it sucks. 36 32, 5, 10 remaining. Dom's got it on the left wing. Quick look inside at Tacmar, but. That's Leon's second steal in about three minutes. Scrappy. That's the Grinnell, that's the Grinnell defensive system. They turn into a bunch of little Zaire Alexanders up there on the defensive end. They're just looking to pick off anything. Tackmeyer is going to pick up his first personal team's ninth, team's tenth, so it will be double bonus here on the way out. Garcia, the freshman from California at the free throw line. No good on the first. Second one on the way. Brunel just three of seven from the free throw line of today. It's not conducive to success. That one misses as well. Three of eight now. A wide oh, football open. Football pass to Fitch. Good footwork through there too. Comes through. Fitch on the easy two. Red Hawks lead by six again. And Dom will get a foul. That'll be his first personal. Rosen will shoot two at the free throw line. Depending on how these refs want to play off this last 437. Could take 10 oh, minutes. Could be. More like 15. We're in for a wild one, folks. Yeah. More like 15. Considering there's 21 free throws shot already in this game. The refs might decide. They wanted a double dribble on Meinholz there. Tackmeyer looking for some help, finds Meinholz. Still step in, 13, no good. Ball comes out. Now the run to the other side, do the Pioneers. It's gonna be another moving screen. New five in. Rep said that he moved the shoulder on the swing, so. Dirty play. Turnover by the Red Hawks on the inbounds. I don't know if that ball was tipped, but it was definitely not. It, thrown it had at a full different strength. look, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Red Hawks come away with it without any points, still. Maybe it scored. Maybe it slipped out of Meinholz's hand. That's what I was wondering too if he it. threw it off the palm or how it went, but. Tackmeyer, he'll go with it. Good. It's a dart. Wow. That thing had barely any arc on it. Fitch, no good, rebounded out. Fitch thought about it and then he's like, okay. Oh. Left side run, here come the Pioneers through there. Good move. Right over into the corner where it needed to be. Three point attempts. That's gonna hit back iron for Ryan Tarigi. Cade needs some help. Tackmeyer looking for somebody. Finds William Ryan. He's got a break in front of him. Corner, Spiel Vogel. Good fake. Steps up. Fades it away. That Ooh. won't good. Too open, right? Wide yep. open. 
It's a mental thing. They play with your mind. You're thinking you shouldn't be this open ever. And a foul called against Rippon. Both teams in the double bonus now. So that'll be second foul on Cade Tackmeyer. Numerous players on both teams with multiple fouls before the first half is even over. Well, the big one is Clark Cunningham with four of them. Yeah, including a Tech. Pioneers got this one within two. Two fifty remaining, forty to thirty-eight. Free throw, good. Pioneers were trailing by eight. Got this one within one now. Meinholz gives it right back to him. Turnover in the lead on the way. No good front iron miss. He had a rebound right underneath the basket and proceeded to kick it out. I think he was a little undersized when <laughs> he was in there. That's the Grinnell system, though. If they get a rebound right Oh! Spielvogel will want to live that one down. Yeah, Tolu Johnson with the flush. Rippon will come back through. Meinholz will finish up to the top. Timeout taken by Coach Kenny Finkel. Full timeout will burn it with them. Red Hawks 42, Pioneers 41. Back with more. Back here at the Wilmore Center, Red Hawks lead the Pioneers 42-41. This Midwest Conference basketball action on your Thursday night. Coming up a little bit later, we'll have coverage of the Ripon College women versus Grinnell. Three on the way. In and out, no good. Almost hit it right in his face. Ryan on the clear. They'll push it ahead to Tackmeyer. Cade's got two fouls. Ryan looking for some help. Back over the edge. Cameron Ford checked in at the last horn. Three in the lead. No, yes, it will go. That's stuck. What a spin. That's a shooter's touch if I've ever seen one. Basket made by Nicholas Courtney. Ryan will catch on the edge. He'll step up. Mid-range jumper. They've been living by those, the Red Hawks. Tie game now, 44-44. And that'll be a foul on Cameron Ford, I believe. Wrong place, wrong time. Tolu Johnson grabbed that rebound and was ready to go up again. And the Pioneers will shoot two. Zach Rosen once again. Seven of 14 for 50% for the Pioneers. Ripping, eh, not too good either, 
If it comes down to it, Rippon wins the battle on the line. Could be the difference in the game the way it's been played so far. Miss both of those. Tackmeyer will throw ahead and find Meinholz. He was eyeing up Spielvogel, I think, but Colby Williams is right there. Put two, it up for the easy two. Two open to pass up there. 60 seconds remaining here in the first half. 46 Stripped 44 away. lead. Oh, he got it back. No foul there either. Almost put some English on it and put it back in. Tackmeyer trying to get through. Could have been a reach. I think Tackmeyer got him with an arm bar in the throat, though, so maybe they just let it slide. That time, Tackmeyer. Eye for an eye. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Coming back the other way. 30 seconds at a five point differential in the shot clock if it matters. No good on the shot. That ball goes out of bounds off of Rippon. 16 on the shot clock, 21 on the game clock. Well, somebody's got to inbounds. Bueller. Right. Bueller. Now they do. Nicholas Courtney says, hey, I'll handle it. Tolu Johnson with it. Gets the screen, comes through the middle. Goes around Meinholz and takes a hard fall. He came down hard, and I think he's favoring his right hand right now. Right so that'll be the third personal for Meinholz. So Rippon has two players now with three or more fouls in the first half alone. Tolu Johnson, like I said, favoring that right arm. He went down hard on his right side. Free throw good. Still made the shots, right? Yeah. Misses the second. No good on that. Spielvogel will run it up. Eight seconds on the clock. Spielvogel will push it down. William Ryan will save it into the hands of Grinnell. Three on the way. No good at the end of the half. It is the Ripon College Red Hawks 46. The Grinnell College Pioneers 45. We'll take a break and come back with the second half in about 15 minutes or so. Thanks for joining us, Ripon College Red Hawk Basketball. Back here at the Wilmore Center as we start the second half. The Ripping College Red Hawks leading 46-45. Creates lottery, Jason Mansmith along with you on the broadcast. The Red Hawks with 17 turnovers in the first half. That's what Grinnell does. They want to force you to give up the ball. Three-pointer taken by the Pioneers, no good. Another reload, that won't good, another rebound. That one goes for the Pioneers. It's the thing you got to do with Grinnell. You got to rebound the ball because as they say, third time's a charm and that just proved it right there. And another turnover. That time a three and point a foul. foul as well. Uh, Rippon leading the rebound category 26 to 15 in that first half. Red Hawks two of nine from behind the arc, eight of 19 for Grinnell. And those two three-pointers for Rippon, both coming out of the left hand of Connor Spielvogel. Rippon shot 57% in the first half. Here's the free throw. That's something good for Jordan Lee. On the other side of it, Grinnell shot 39%. Keys the foul situation, right? Meinholz, yeah. three. Clark Cunningham with four. That free throw is good for Lee. I'd imagine Cunningham would see limited, if any, minutes in the second half. Well, now with Meinholz with his fourth there as yeah. well, he'll take a seat. Tom Galati comes back in. And that takes, that takes great risk into playing 
the rest of the game for the Rippin Red Hawks leading scorer. Spielvogel will find Tackmeyer. Tipped again. Red Hawks have yet to get one into their possession. I don't know, they haven't gotten it over to the half court line. That ball goes out of Ooh. bounds off of Rippin. New I'd five will hit the floor. Go ahead. I'd just like to give a shout out to all of our listeners. Yes. Both in Wisconsin, Illinois, and even if you're listening from Grinnell in Iowa, just like to give you a shout out. Yeah. We're glad you're with us. Thank you for joining us here on this broadcast. 5146 Pioneers have jumped out to a five point lead. They've gone 6 0 since this start, uh, second half started. Under a minute gone. Kobe Williams with the rebound. He'll wait up for it and find Tackmeyer. They just got to get one across the timeline. They're not going to. Again, the Pioneers tenacious on their defense. A 6-0 run to start the second half. Biggest lead of the ball game for the Pioneers. The timeouts taken. We'll take it with them. We might as well. 51-46 Pioneers lead by five. Pioneers in control, 51-46, their biggest lead of the ball game right now. Been on a 6-0 run since the start of the second half. And if you're head coach Kenny Finko, this is not what you want to see. This would be a massive win for this Red Hawk team that has struggled out of the gates to start and would love nothing more than to take down the second-ranked team in the conference. Galati gets the rebound. We'll see if the Red Hawks can get it across the timeline. They Rippins. do. Uh-oh. William Ryan going to get fouled. Rippins played surprisingly well against ranked teams this year. They're one of their only two wins this year came against Carthage College early in the year. At that point, Carthage was ranked 18 in the nation. Right. Rippin will do the inbounds just in front of the student section. With what students there are? Man, there's a few of them down there. There's See, a few. Christian's down there, right? Yep. <laughs> Galati's got it, going to the right edge. Kick to the corner, Spielvogel three left, good. Connor Spielvogel's a flamethrower from the corner. It doesn't matter which corner, he's going to hit it. Nine points for Spielvogel. All three, all nine of them coming on three threes. Just taken out of the hands of Tahuki by Will Ryan. Just a tenacious player on the defensive end. Ryan's between the circles, double trapped. Over to the right side, Tackmeyer, good look over to Galati. Finds Spielvogel in the corner again. Back to Dom, eight foot, no oh, good. Oh, he short-handed it. Williams goes up with it, gets and a the foul. hack, yeah. So Williams goes to the line with a chance to tie this ball game back up at 51 with 17.48 left to go in the second half. I'd say a well-taken timeout. Yeah. Definitely yeah. got him fired up. All about momentum. If you can slow down the other team's momentum, you got a good chance. Williams, that sophomore, six foot seven inch frame. Set to shoot two. Pioneers will leave two on the line and everybody back for the Red Hawks. Chance to tie this ball game at 51. Next one is no good. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think there's been a time in this game where a player's gone to the line and made all of his free throws. Exactly. Very right. uncommon to see, I wouldn't say poor, but such below average free throw shooting in a basketball game, especially not at the college level. Spin Ooh. move underneath and good. Great body control. Nick Lundy. 
out of California, Manhattan Beach. Speed will go again. Tackmeyer had Galati wide open in the corner, but he's gonna take the shot himself. Inside the restricted area arc, they're giving that in the paint. And if you've noticed anything about this game, it's that Grinnell takes only two kinds of shots. It's either in the paint or beyond the arc. Right. Nothing else. And that's part of the system. Lundy again with two, basket on the other side. Tackmeyer. Shot for three, no good. Rebound Williams. 55-54, Pioneers lead. 16-30 and counting. Turnover by the Red Hawks. Kalati couldn't hold on to it. That was forced by Jordan Lee out of San Pedro, California. Rolling Jean, Hills prep. Yeah, Jaden Fitch coming back in for the Red Hawks. New five for the Pioneers. Fitch had a rough first half. He had a couple of points, but he also had a couple of points that he left right on the rim. He'll be looking to bounce back and have a strong second half. I think he got to those moments where it's just like so wide open. I'm like, man, is this, is this really happening? It's a mental thing because for most, for most players, if you play in the Grinnell system, or against it, I should say, you've never been that wide open in your basketball life. Maybe not since you were 10 when no one played deep. Right. The ball this time goes out of bounds and goes to the Red Hawks. I've been playing Y basketball for three years now. I've never once been as wide open as I've seen <laughs> some of these guys. Tell me they post up well? Yeah. Good. Either that or you're just swarmed and fouled by three people. That's the Y defense. Quick feed into Tackmeyer. Wide open in the corner. Spielvogel three. That Ooh. won't go. Spielvogel's going to be Rippon's weapon when it comes to beyond the arc. That'll be on the charge. Yes. No one on the Grinnell bench appreciated that one. Everyone on the Rippon bench is up. I didn't see who took that. Who took that one? That was Dom Galati. Oh, that's the that's what he brings to this team. He brings a certain level of toughness that the Rippon Redhawks need on the floor. Spiel Volga will do the inbounds. Pressure D at the inbounds and on Tackmeyer, who gets it. They'll double team right away. Will Ryan over to the left side. Pass tried to get into Tackmeyer, but picked off. Three on the way. Suhuki, no good. Rebounded out. Here comes Spielvogel. He'll feed it back to Tackmeyer. He saw him coming. Eyes in the back of his head. He had Fitch wide open. He's going to get it to him. Oh! Missed it again. Fitch visibly frustrated with himself. You can see him yelling as he comes back down the floor. Oh, Will Ryan took a tumble there. Stuck a perfect 10 on the landing, <laughs> I was going to say, did well. Tackmeyer wide open on that one. He'll bring it in this time. Go baseline, lay it up, good. Great body control from Tackmeyer on that bucket. Five minutes gone, 57-56. Pioneers lead by one. They had a 6-0 lead and a 6-0 run to begin this second half and took a six-point lead as well. That's going to be a foul on Galati. Oh, my God. A little muscle oh. up here. Oh. Galati's got to be careful with how he's yelling. The Red Hawks is getting a talking to from the ref. The Red Hawks have already had one technical called on them today. They don't need a second. Galati's still jawing at the Grinnell bench. Here comes the inbounds. And that's just tenacious defense, though, to begin with. Galati is... Dom Galati is only 5'10". He was on Kai Tahuki, 6'6". So there's a height difference there of eight inches. And he was playing like he was 6'6 himself. Galati will do the inbounds. Go that's ahead. something you can't teach. No. You either are tough or you're not. What a pass to break it. Cameron Ford will wait, go with it, good. Some of Rippon's big men have been noticing. When they catch the ball down low, this kind of applies mostly to Jaden Fitch. 
They're too deep. They catch it right underneath the basket instead of two feet in front of it. Pioneers make the layup 59 58, 14 16 ahead. Davis with it on the edge. Tackmeyer will roll it around. Fine, Will Ryan. Yeah, I travel. Oh, yep. Move the pivot foot. Foot move just a little bit much. One player who has not played for the Red Hawks yet this half is Clark Cunningham. He started this game, but those four fouls he picked up in the first half really have hindered Kenny Finko's ability to put him into the game. Well, mine holds there with four as well, right? So. Yep. That's the Red Hawks' leading scorer there. That should have been a travel. We'll oh. give the end one. Wow. Seemed on that turnaround move, he took about five little baby steps. I'm all for the gather step, but <laughs> gather plus four is still a travel. 61-58, Pioneers lead 13-55 remaining. This is a stark contrast to the last game I was here before. Illinois College versus Ripon. There wasn't a point scored for the first three and a half minutes yeah. of the game. Free throw on the way for the Pioneers. He's up. That won't go. And that's going to be against the uh, Pioneers. Jordan Ryan with the foul. First personal. Team's fourth inbounds coming from Connor. Tackmeyer on the inbound. Tackmeyer down there jumped over him. Right. Good finish from wow. Will Ryan on the edge. Switched to the left hand in midair and put it in off the glass. Just kissed it in. This time oh. attack on the edge. Not going to be there. Will Ryan looked like got all ball on that one. Looked like it was just a clean little strip as he went up into the air, but ref saw otherwise. He's going to get a explanation right now as we speak. Nine of 24 are the Pioneers now for 53%. Ripping three of 11. That's not right. <laughs> Try that again. Seven to 12, there we go. Another rebound for the Pioneers. Little reset, 62-60. Grinnell leading Rippon. Shot put up, no good. Back up again, good for two. Four point lead for Grinnell. Pretty good crowd here tonight. Yeah, new five on the way. A few folks from Grinnell making the trip over. You can spot a Grinnell fan a long ways away. They wear a t-shirt with the Grinnell logo and then on top it says three is greater than two. Correct. It's what they live and die by there in Iowa. Spielvogel will do the inbounds and find Tackmeyer. That's a risky pass. Yeah. Galati. I like him running the press break. Yes, though. he runs it perfectly and always seems to. Foot slip. Meinholz will come back in with his four fouls. He's going to have to play carefully. They don't want him out. Still 13 minutes left to go in this game, and it is still anyone's contest. Muscled down, here comes Grinnell. Shot put up, no good. Rebounded out by Meinholz, he'll get fouled. He gets mauled down low trying to grab that rebound. That's gonna be the fifth team foul on the Pioneers. Already. Spielvogel Perfect. will run it down. And, and finish. Kisses it in. A loop around and the finish, no good. 
with the left hand. Colby Williams with the rebound. Galati. What Over to the corner, yeah. Here Mine comes Meinholz with a flush. Talk about some gather steps. I think he had a few of those yeah. coming in there. <laughs> when it's ripping, we don't see it. Well, right down the middle, right? Yeah. Right. Shot on the way is no good. Rebound comes out. Great box out by Galati down low. Going to find Meinholz. Going to find Davis. Now ahead to Spielvogel. Once again, the five foot eleven Galati went against the six foot four Sean Walzer down there, the sophomore for Grinnell. And the box out was just superb. Great technique on it. Williams under the basket, up and good. Timeout taken by head coach David Arsenal. 66-64, the Red Hawks have fought back to get a two-point lead. We'll come back with more. It's this ripping is down to the wire. You bet. Back here at the Wilmore Center, 66-64. The Red Hawks lead the Pioneers. Pioneers jumped out early to a big lead, and there's a three-point basket for them to be right back in the lead. Tackmeyer will go to the right side, put on the brakes. Find Meinholz. Spielvogel, corner, three-pointer. In and out, no good. Rebound will come the other way. Pioneers on the run out. And the setup. Lee through the paint. Basket good. 69-66. Nice. That ball just slipped right through Meinholz's hands. Lundy to Lee, back over to the edge. Sean Murphy. Shares a name with the uh, starting catcher for the Atlanta Braves. I don't know what that was. Meinholz will pull the rebound and come the other way. Find Will Ryan. Meinholz is being extra cautious on the defensive end. We all know why. There's Spielvogel. Another one. Three-point basket. Connor Spielvogel to tie this one up. His third of the game. Fourth. Fourth. Fourth of the game. He's got 14 on the night. Attack towards the rim, and oh. a foul will be called against. No, I think they're going to call goaltending. Basket interference, okay. So the basket is good for two. I don't know. That seemed kind of that seemed kind of in the it middle. Seemed in the air, right? It did. I thought I saw it go more off the glass and then rebound. Clean block in my opinion. So Rippin will inbounds with Luke Meinholz at the baseline on the north side of the gymnasium. Inside to Will Ryan. Colby Williams across the timeline. Brought his foot over and said, all right, let's look for the rest of these folks. Galati will get it inside to Tackmeyer. Cade, basket no good. Oh. Basket out of bounds. And good as the Red Hawks will retain possession. 10-11 remaining, 71-69, Pioneers lead on your Ripping College Red Hawk scoreboard. Tackmeyer will get the inbounds. Comes down to the edge, back out to the top. Galati has played the Clark Cunningham position here pretty much the entire second half. Oh. I got him on the old travel. Visibly frustrated Dom Galati is. Tried to make a nice adjustment and get the dribble down before he came down, but didn't do it in time. Yeah. 
Now to the edge, backside help. Pioneers will run through the edge. Now back to the middle, lose it. Save it back in. Try again. Good defense, Cameron Ford. Shot clock's at 10. Scoop up and oh. foul. That's going to be on Tackmeyer. That's going to be. Is that going to be his fourth, I believe? Third. Garcia will go to the free throw line to shoot two. And that one is no good. Spiel will go back in for the Red Hawks. As Meinholz will take a little seat. That's probably not a bad idea. Get a little break time, make sure he gets a few minutes free of getting any foul chances before yep. the remaining five or six minutes. He got in about what, maybe 12 and a half, 13 minutes? Yeah. So he's been in for three and a half, four minutes now. Cameron Ford with the rebound. Here comes Tackmeyer. They got Will Ryan at half court just waiting for it, but they break the press on their own. He's got to find someone. Ford Cam Ford. Body up. Travel. On the travel. To Lou Johnson back in. Carson DeBruel as well for the Pioneers. Ooh. They're fighting for it. They're going to call a foul on Tackmeyer. Saying he lowered the shoulder to run through. That'll be his fourth, and here comes Meinholz. In the Y, that's normal. So Colby William is back in. Luke Meinholz back in. Cam Ford sits. As does Kate Tackmark. Tillou Johnson looking for the screen. Now goes back to the edge. To Hookie again. Good. Another one. That's just his 11th point of the game so far. Galati wide open. He, he wanted it. Now Dom to the basket. That won't go. Williams will get it. Back up. He'll get fouled. I think he wanted to jam that, but. Galati looked like you pressed the fake shot button a couple too many times <laughs> in 2K. <laughs> Just, oh, no, huh? No, no. Huh? Uh. Pass. 74-69. Pioneers leading by five. 8-43. Williams, free throw, good. Let's see if we can get a guy who makes both this time. So far, just 37 free throw shot in the game. Only average basketball right. game. For those of you who are wondering if it's sarcasm, it is. This is an average at all. Another one. We have yet to see a perfect trip to the line yet from any player in this ball game. Pioneers will roll around. Good move underneath. Basket up and good. That's this Tolu's time. second dunk of the game. Six point lead for the Pioneers again. Their biggest lead of the ball game. Spiel Vogel three. That'll rim oh. out. No good. Mine what holds. a rebound. Oh. That won't go either. Rippin has left too many points in this game on the rim. Oh! Yeah, and that's charge. gonna be another charge. Nick Lundy will get that charge. Both teams with now Grinnell with seven fouls. Rippin with six. Ryan Davis in for the Red Hawks. Spielvogel will find Ford. Check that William Ryan. Mine holds on the time catch. That kick time. Kick ball. Kicking violation. Ah. 
All right, inbounds coming from Meinhold. Six point lead for the Pioneers, 7.55 remaining. Red Hawks looking for their first conference win. Spielvogel, corner, lefty, good. 15 now for Spielvogel. His fifth three of the game. I should say 17 for him. He's got those two free throws in there. Oh, he made a layup, I think. Oh, yeah, you're right. My bad. Almost put him on skates. That's going to be a travel call. It's getting mighty chippy here, folks. Getting a little emotional. That's what you love to see from a ball game, though. I think any time you play Grinnell, you get that, right? It's just the way it goes. It's just the, the intensity only emotion of the I'd be feeling is pure anger playing against <laughs> these guys. Just <laughs> boiling. It's tough to keep your calm, right? And yeah. I think that's why you see it spoil, boil over sometimes. Williams will find it back. Well, as a post player, they don't give you much opportunity to do anything down low playing defense. Colby oh. trying for the alley oop there from. Tack Meyer. That might have been one of the coolest things I've ever seen if it worked. Basket put up, no good, rebounded out. Three on the way, that's no good. Whoa. Williams on the clear. That was an authoritative rebound from Kobe. Tack Meyer over to Williams, Kobe, charge. So Kobe Williams, that'll be his third. Team's seventh, 6.53, and Galati back in for the Hawks. Jordan Lee, left-handed squeeze, good. Galati quickly ahead, finds Spielvogel, back to Dom. Takmar was looking for a trip to the basket, he almost got it. He'll get it this time, go up with it, strong, no good. Hard off the glass. Comes and he comes down with the rebound. Own. He's Back gonna up. go up, blocked. Looks like he might have gotten one in the eye. Galati's gonna pick up another foul here. That's gonna be his third, I believe. Tahuki gonna go to the free throw line. He's got a quiet 11 tonight. Free throw good. Somebody made them both. Our first perfect trip to the line tonight. Galati. And it only took until 623 left in the second half. Spielvogel will get the pass. Red Hawks trail by seven here. Biggest lead in the ball game now for the Pioneers. An oh, unsuccessful little... reception of that pass. All right, back through. Here's Galati. He'll go with the left hand. Can't get it to go. Oh, the hesitation had Meinholz looking kind of silly. Three point basket is good. Red Hawks up to the point now where they need to stop looking for the pass and just take the shot. Tahuki comes through with another basket and a timeout taken by the Red Hawks. We'll take it with them back with more 85 73 Pioneers lead over Ripon.
Back at the Wilmore Center, Red Hawks trail 85-73. Rippin in control with the basket right now. I should say basketball right now. Galati goes to the edge, loses the dribble. This game's starting to go the wrong way. Grinnell's got them feeding out of the palm of their hand. You can see Galati visibly frustrated coming back down the floor. And he's just playing with a head of steam right now. Blocked at the three-point line. Oh, here comes Meinholz down the floor. Lays it up and Ooh, good. I thought he was going to throw it down. <laughs> 85-75, 10-point lead for the Pioneers. Five minutes and change remaining. Williams almost got the backside block. That'll go down. Tariq with the basket. Colby Williams will run it down. Off the tip, he'll spin, bring it up. Good move. 77-87. And Williams will get a touch foul there. Uh, difference of the game right now? What do you think, Crete? Uh, turnovers ripping 32. Yeah. Grinnell, 12. <laughs> ripping shooting 54%, Grinnell 44%. Neither team real hot from the line. 57% for ripping. 52% for the Pioneers. And they'll go back to the free throw line to shoot. Bonus. No good, rebounded out. Bit of a wonky free throw motion there from uh, number 24, Dylan Geestring. Basket up and good, Colby Williams on the finish. Colby's got 20. That's a quiet 20, That is a man. very quiet 20. Basket put up and good to Hookie. We'll take a timeout with the Grinnell College Pioneers. They lead 89-79. Back with more after this. Red Hawks trail 89-79, 4-13 remaining. Luke Meinhold set the inbound, finds, K finds Cade Tackmeyer. Trapped Tack on Myers. the baseline, lost off the dribble too. Meinholz will bring the inbounds. Spielvogel. Meinholz will have to run it down. He's got it mid-range, good. Eighty-nine, eighty-one. This is where that uh, conditioning comes in, right? The legs feed the wolves. Yeah. Three fifty-one remaining, and these guys have been running forever. So is Grinnell, but they're running in shifts. Meinholz got to get that one. Won't. Ball goes back to the Pioneers. Legs feed the Wolves, calling back movie Miracle. Oh, okay, yeah. Good reference, dude. Thank you. 10 point lead for the Pioneers, 91 81. We'll get it. Here's the inbounds. Not on the edge. Ryan Tarigi inside. Another timeout taken by Grinnell, 93-81. That's a full timeout. We'll take a little break.
Back here at the Wilmore Center, Ripon trailing 93-81. Biggest lead of the ball game now for the Pioneers. 327 remaining. You just got to start putting up points now. Yeah, you do. You got to kind Hawks. of you got to kind of adapt their own offense. You kind of got to chuck them up. Like right here, you can't you can't think. You got to shoot it. Basket up and good. Connor Spiel will go three point basket. 93-84 brings the lead down to nine. Three minutes remaining. You're looking for steals. Grinnell will go into a little bit of a stall. Spin back to the other side. Jordan Lee will work against Will Ryan. A layup put up, no good. Tackmeyer will pull the rebound. Colby Williams pinned that one against the backboard. Mine holds into Williams. Colby goes up with it. No good. He'll get blocked. Foot was on the line. Ripping basketball. It's a three possession game. They have plenty of time. 222 remaining. Mine holds on the inside. Tackmeyer ready to go. Mid range. Good. Two point basket. 93-86, Red Hawks on a 5-0 run. Jordan Lee. Again, Grinnell into a little bit of a stall. They took it down to about three on the shot clock last time. Three in the basket in the corner, no good. Ran down by. The Pioneers. That Put was a beautiful inside. basket cut yeah. and one. Gabe Garcia, basket and one, 95-86 with 94 seconds remaining. They'll pull everybody off the line. Nope. And with that, Colby Williams will follow out five points. I should say five fouls and 20 points. Very quiet 20 points. He was a big factor in this game. It's too bad they won't have him for the last minute and a half. Jaden Fitch back in for the Red Hawks. Free throw is not good. Fourteen to twenty-nine from the three-point for the free throw oh, line. Oh, a nice shot by Tackmeyer from the baseline. Behind the board. Ninety-five, eighty-eight. Tightening this up with a three-point play. Bring it within ninety-five, ninety. That one is good. Six point game now. Full timeout from Kenny Finkel. We'll take a timeout with him. 95 89 Pioneers lead. Coming back with more.
One minute and 25 seconds remaining of this ball game. 95-89, the Pioneers lead the Red Hawks. We were predicting a good game at the beginning of this. We got it. Yeah, absolutely we did. Red Hawks looking for their first conference win of the season. Grinnell looking to stay undefeated. What a win this would be for the Red Hawks if they could pull this off. Taken away. Mine holds basket. Last touch to him. Right call. Didn't want it to be the right call. Right. <laughs> it was, though. Dang it. Let's see if they can do it again. And a timeout. And that'll be taken by Grinnell. We'll keep it right here this time. 95-89. And as we look at the upcoming schedule for the Ripon College Red Hawks, a little bit later, they will go to uh, Illinois College on the 6th, Lake Forest on the 9th, and then hosting Monmouth back here on January 13th, the 17th versus Lawrence. And for Grinnell, after this one, they're going to be at Lawrence on the 6th, and then they're going to be back home against Beloit and Andrews on the 10th and 12th, respectively. And then after that, the 17th, they will be at Monmouth. Yeah, and so, then they get to host Ripon again on the, on the 20th. Yep. That'll be another tough contest for the Red Hawks to go in and try and beat Grinnell on their own hard, hardwood. A hardwood that's seen many records broken yeah. there. Sure, Tough, Jim. Sure, many of you know the name Grinnell from the name Jack Taylor. Scored 138 points in a game in 2013 for these Pioneers. We have the luxury of having him back in the Ripping Gym about two weeks after that game. He didn't go for that many, but he had a bunch. Jack Taylor is a prime example of what this system does to players it takes undersized guys who normally wouldn't do that well at a college in a college program and turns them into studs 95 89 under just about a minute to go here remaining red hawks trailing by six basket stuck a foul and a wedgie on the oh. same play to wow Lee johnson i'm just seeing things i haven't seen in a while in this game you see a Inbounds play with all five players starting out of bounds. You see a wedgie. Still don't know what the foul call on Kobe Williams <laughs> right. was down there. <laughs> uh, foul on Cade Tackmeyer. That'll be his fifth, so he'll leave the game. The second Red Hawk to foul out of this game, him, on, him and Kobe Williams. Surprisingly, Clark Cunningham's been able to stay despite playing limited minutes, as has Luke Meinholz. Free throw no good. Here's the second attempt on the way. That one won't go either. Still a six point game with under a minute left. They're gonna need to start putting up shots now. Meinholz will go hard and that won't go. But he will get fouled. Tackmeyer, uh, 16 points in the ball game. Very quiet 16. Yeah. Seems like the entire Ripon offense has been putting up a seemingly quiet game, but that's what you get when you play against Grinnell. Yeah. The numbers they put up always just makes the other teams seem inconsequential. Going back to Jack Taylor, in the game he scored 138, there was a player on the other team who scored 70. No one remembers that guy. <laughs> right, exactly. Good free throw there from Luke Meinholz, 95-90. Pioneers lead by five. Meinholz trying to cut that to four. Now you got to put some pressure on the inbounds here. Send him to the line. In a game that has been marred by bad free throw shooting from both teams, it would not make any sense to not put a team on the line. But they're, they just don't seem to want to. Kenny Finko checking the clock. Slowly seeing his chances dwindle away with each passing second. That's going to be a travel. Rippon's going to get the ball back with 27 seconds left in this ball game. No shot clock, but they're going to have to run it down, and maybe, just maybe, they'll get fouled on a prayer and make it. Wouldn't that be something? Meinholz will inbounds, finds Will Ryan. Ahead to Meinholz. They're going to go to a man. Nope, they uh, looks like a man defense for a second. Galati will go baseline to the edge. 
Ryan inside, mine holds, spin move, goes, humps, basket, won't go. Looking for the foul, now they got a foul. And they do. 8.9 remaining. Some frustration in the crowd to that last possession by Rippon. Pioneers will throw two this time. Jordan Lee at the free throw line. Casually got 28 tonight for that freshman. Cool. 96-91, Jordan Lee. That one's good as well for Lee. Give him 29. Five seconds on the clock. Ryan will go up with it. And there'll be a held ball. Oh, a foul. Foul. All right. Zach Rosen at the free throw line with a chance to seal this one out with point eight. 97-91. Free throw. Good. A limited arc on these shots. Flatter than a coffee table hey, on some of them. As long as they hit the, the basket and go in, right? I would use a different analogy, but I can't. Next one, no good. Rebounded out. Fitch will chuck one. That nope. won't go. So the Grinnell College Pioneers coming to Ripon tonight and to knock off the Red Hawks 98 to 91. I want to thank our broadcast team here for you this afternoon. Jonathan, Patrick down there. Crete, hey, thanks so much, man. We'll do it no again problem. in a little bit. Yes, sir. Ripon College women's basketball coming away in just a little bit. Stick around.